But remember, if you're going to hand deliver it, make sure you don't do it too early. You can't get it to the client more than 60 days ahead of the job. And if you go ahead and use certified mail, make sure you pop it in the mailbox at least a week before starting. Now this is for lead-based paint activities. And when we went ahead and tested this, we noted that we did not have lead on this surface. But let's imagine that lead was present after our test. This is a window. Both rules will require that we go ahead and set up containment. With LSW, since it's a window, this is going to be a level two containment. With RRP, it is going to be containment simply because it's a window. We're not going to measure this out. But let's say we're working on a wall, like this uh, wall right here. If we were going to disturb this painted surface and it had lead on it, we're going to measure out the amount of surface area that we're disturbing. Both rules, LSW and RRP, have an interior de minimis size of six square foot. So for LSW, for instance, if we're below six square foot of disturbed area, we're going to treat that in most cases as a level one containment, putting plastic on the floor. Now that may change if we're using different tools like power tools and such. We may bump that up to a level two. It's really just a guideline. With our RP, that de minimis size of six square foot, if we're over it, we treat it as a lead-based paint activity and set up containment. If we're under it, technically we don't have to treat it as lead. Exterior, if you're gonna lift some siding or drill some holes to blow these walls, you wanna look for 20 square foot or less exterior. If it's less than that, you don't have to treat it as a lead site uh, according to the RRP rule. More than that, of course, you do have to set up containment. For LSW, again, level one, level two, you pretty much are always putting up containment under those DOE rules. Step five is placing signs and barriers. A barrier might be simple tape, like this caution tape here. Signs need to read caution, lead renovation work, uh, do not enter, no eating, drinking, smoking, things like that. You want to have these in the language of the folks who are going to be reading them. So you don't want anyone walking into your work site. While RRP does not have a specific setback for signs and barriers, LSW requires five feet when possible. And 20 feet out from your work site on an exterior setup. Step six is containment. Now containment involves keeping the dust that you're generating in the work area from migrating out into the clean area of the client's home. This can be done in a lot of different ways. Both LSW and RRP provide guidelines for setting up containment, but they aren't going to tell you exactly how to set your containment up in the various uh, scenarios that you're going to see. Floor containment requires six feet of plastic out in all directions from the work area if space permits, unless it can be reduced by installing a vertical wall. So I've laid a sheet of six mil poly on the floor. And now what I'm gonna do is tape this around underneath my work area. Now if there was a baseboard here, we wanna make sure that we tape this poly up just above the baseboard. We don't want that dust settling down on the top of the board or, or getting behind it. got our floor plastic in place we want to make sure we move out anything we haven't already taken out of the area don't want this to get dirty we also want to cover up anything we're not working on we're not going to be doing any work on this window here so we're going to go ahead and cover it
As you can see, we're treating this like a full containment, a level two or a full RRP containment. The next step is to really put up our barrier wall, preventing entry into the workspace. A lot of different ways to create a doorway. This is just one that we like. What I've done is created an eye to reinforce the cuts that we're going to make in just a second. of expansion rods like that, even one guy can set this up pretty quickly. Let's tape everything together. A couple of things to note about our doorway. If you'll take a look at the bottom here, we've integrated our doorway plastic with the floor plastic. We've gone ahead and left a gap on the bottom of our eye door up four to six inches to make sure any debris that's coming through here isn't gonna just hop right on out. We've also added a flap. This flap needs to be weighted down at the bottom so it's hanging free and any debris made in this area is going to hit against it. This is one of our innovations. We like to showcase other folks, but this one right here is just a, a simple piece of PVC that we use as a reusable weight for the bottom of our door flaps. It's easy to clean, nice and smooth. And to weight it down, we just have a piece of rebar in there. A couple of caps on the end and you got yourself a nice weight that you can use time and time again. 